And the lovely day it is here in Parma. And a very big day for Andrew Trimble, equaling Roger Wilson's uh, all-time Ulster cap-winning record of 221. 12 changes in all, only Charles Pietau and Darren Cave retained in the back division, and only Rodney Ayew retained up front. It is a glorious day at the Stadio Lanfranchi here. Not a, a huge crowd, as you probably would, would be surprised to hear. And coming on the back of a, a couple of pretty decent performances in South Africa in successive weeks, losing to the Cheetahs, and then putting in a very impressive performance to beat the Southern Kings. The Zebra have their tails up to a fair old extent. It's a very young side in general, and we were talking to Conor O'Shea, the Italian director of rugby, before the game, and he's quite hopeful that a lot of these youngsters will be coming through to form the basis of the 2018 Italian Six Nations squad. He is here as his, uh, his fellow Irishman, Stephen Aboud, who joined him at, at the start of last season in charge of Italian rugby. A fair old task, but Conor O'Shea is relishing that challenge. They've taken their time coming out, and how wonderful to see, well, the future of Italian rugby being uh, led out by the presence of Italian rugby. Just the one change made by head coach Michael Bradley. Vastly experienced international prop Dario Cistolini comes in at a tight head to join to make up an all international front row. Lots of experience with George Biaggi in the second row and no fewer than six cap players in the back division, captained by centre Tomas Castello. Well, conditions pretty perfect, Ryan Constable. Yeah, and Ulster have certainly been. Uh happy to play in those conditions, a much more expansive approach, playing a lot more off that uh, 10 shoulder, giving options inside and out, and these are the conditions that Ulster will look to expand yeah, upon yeah. that style of play and get some, uh, get some scoring opportunities quite early, you'd think. Referee is from Scotland, he's uh, Mike Adamson, and the man with the ball about to kick off is the man who scored oh, so more good. points than anybody for the Zebra this year. Italian international outside half. He's probably the number one in that position at the national level, kids. Carlo Canna. There's Mike <laughs> Adamson. The TMO is his fellow Scott, Neil Patterson, who in fact is from Northern Ireland. Oh, Former first class referee, now taking the TMO, squeezing that in between his uh, day job as a dentist, Andrea Piardi and Manuel Bottino. Oh, the assistant referees. Canna's put that high into the Palmer afternoon. Well taken in, though, by Ulster to start with. John Cooney back on the side. Likewise, Christian Iliafano, enterprise here from Ulster, Darren Cave, Pietau. Thundering thump against uh, Tommaso Boni. Assault. Callum Black. One of seven changes to the Ulster forward pack. Liliafano again. Luke Marshall playing it inside center. And away goes John Dysel with Andrew Trimble, his skipper outside him. That's what Ulster perhaps have been missing. Bit of serious South African muscle. Oh, well taken on by Rodney Ayew. What pace by the big fella. What a game he had last week. And uh, didn't find a fellow Ulster player, though. Well, what a start this is. Little chip and chase by Zebra. And across comes Louis Ludic. He's going to have to be quick, and he is quick. Well, we've hardly had a chance to get our breath. And uh, what a, 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 a speed this game has started at. One end of the park to the other. What a run by uh, Rodney Ayew. Didn't come to anything, though. And also Stay under on. a wee bit of pressure. Look, Marshall in the outside half position. Well, well, we're getting the game. We hope we would, given the conditions and that opening uh, passage of play, long. indicative of what Ulster have been doing all season. Trusting themselves well within their own 22 yeah, to go through multiple phases, then look to create better Turn kicking off. options, or on that occasion, a mismatch which was exploited in that wider channel, and then that composure to hold on to the ball and go again. Unfortunately, the offload just not going to hand, but exciting stuff from the start. I wasn't quite sure who it was took that ball, and then you realise it was Rodney Ayew at full speed. What, a, what an impressive sight that was. Yeah, opening the legs and uh, unfortunately the offload just not going to hand, but clever uh, exploitation oh, nice of space this. there and taking the tackle, keeping your hands free just to the offload the line, and then we saw that end-to-end -end stuff counter. So some good option taking on. by Osta early on right. to create that Get opportunity. Right. Clever little chip and chase, well won at the front by Zebra. Kana has to stretch a little bit. Mattia Bellini came in off his wing. Here goes Zebra again. 
What a good uh, bit of play by uh, Biaggi. Off the ball now. Sabre inside us is 22, and they get the first penalty and the first chance of points. Mike Adamson saying that us are not releasing in the tackle, and this should be three fairly regulation points for the home side. Yeah, yeah, so Zebra will be delighted to be able to have the first opportunity for those points, and uh, Ulster just getting the decision against them at the breakdown. Need to ensure that they adapt to the referee's interpretation around there. Christian Lealofano is getting a little bit of uh, medical assistance to what looks like a shoulder well, put yeah, in a pretty assist. big hit there I early on. And just going through the, the routines of checking make, that injury. Make, make clear now. Yeah. It wasn't the surviving the clear out, it's a clear release first I'm looking for. Michael Webb, the team, the team doctor there, and uh, Mike Adamson having a little word with John Dyson explaining to why he exactly was penalised. But in the meantime, having taken his uh, headgear off, it's... Uh, Carlo Canna, who's got 24 points in the four outings so far, to give Zebra an early lead. And he's done just that. So, just over three minutes break and 3 0 to the home side. Yeah, that's Conor O'Shea, Michael Bradley was saying. The Zebra team playing with a bit more confidence now, a bit more freedom, not, not weighed down by that. Um, the outside influences that, that maybe can be negative and just playing as a team and we've seen some some green shoots from them they've got a core group of those sort of players around 23 that are Italian qualified that they're hoping will really form the nucleus of this team moving forward and here's a bit of enterprise from Zebra good defending by Ulster forcing them back inside the 22 John Andrew in with the tackle. Oh, they've got that away well. Cistellini, the prop forward, tackled the just inside that 22 metre line. Violi gets it away. Bonnie releases. Well, what a good piece of play this is by Mattia Bellini, and he's still going. No wonder he's so highly rated. Good tackle there on uh, Julio Bersegni, the other wing he was in support. And Zebra playing with a huge amount of flair and no little skill either. Little show of the ball by uh, Tommaso Castello, the Italian skipper. And Ulster not releasing again in the tackle. Well, the yeah, referee obviously hot yeah, on that clear release. So, uh, even if the player feels that he has done that, it's it's that it uh, body language where he puts both hands up in the air to show that clear release is going to be important judging by the way the referee is doing that but excellent passage of play from Zebra again trusting themselves deep in their own 22 looking for that offload yep. and then some weak tackling from Ulster that allowed Zebra oh, to okay, advance to this position up. where they get another opportunity for penalty we've seen this run here just grasping at the player excellent fend off and forcing his way upfield well there were at least five Ulster players playing nothing to do with it in their unfamiliar away strip which stayed here in Italy after the last time they were here a few weeks ago and has been laundered it's only the second time they've worn it this season but for the second time of asking it's the zebra outside half Carlo Canna the 25 year old now with 22 Italian international caps to his name to double the home side's lead giving it a fine clip and he's pushed it wide and that mine is a let off for Ulster yeah, Zebra will be disappointed uh, if they could have got that three points. That gives them the confidence, 6-0 scoreline, and uh, still inside Ulster territory, and as we await the return of the ball to get this game underway again. Now we've got two footballs on the field, over enthusiastic ball boys. Now three. One is just quite enough, I think. Had three balls, almost had none. Fabiani waiting. Christian Liliafano starting his fourth game of the season, having started the first three with John Cooney. Well, Ulster's defending is not sharp enough. They're allowing men to get past that gain line. And here comes Zebra again. This is terrific stuff by the home side. Uh, this is Giovanni Lacata, only 20 years of age. Hugely impressive. First turnover to Ulster, Reedy to Daiso. Reedy is in there to help. Cooney, Liliafano. Taken on by Ian Henderson, making his first start of the season. Cooney, there's a, an overlap here. Ayu, a wee bit sloppy. Peter Brown does well to tidy it up, and he's absolutely manhandled there by the 
Zebra open side the South African Johan Mayer. And this time it's a penalty to Ulster. I just yeah, the line speed that's been so prominent with Ulster in their opening games this season, not evident here today, and it's something they'll want to address quickly, that physicality in the tackle. They're coming off second best at the minute, and it's a trend they won't want to see continue in this match. Fano, who got a, a conversion and a penalty last time out a couple of weeks ago against the Scarlets at uh, go, yep. Ravenhill. John Andrew making a rare start for Ulster into a shortened line out. Good take by Brian. That's pretty efficient by the visitors. Also getting a good secondary shove on. John Andrew has the ball under control. Kune, Lilia Fano closed down pretty quickly though, and that's been spilled forward by Ulster, referee playing advantage, and the kick was taken quickly, advantage is over, Ulster line out, looking to get away with that again, very impressed with the pace that the Zebra are putting into this game. Yeah, yeah defensively they're right on cue, yeah, and that's that creating those line. turnover opportunities, and okay, they've played the one? majority of this first half down okay, in the on Ulster the line, 22, and another opportunity to apply some pressure to Ulster's lineup. Second take by Braun. Cooney takes on the kicking duties and does a pretty decent job. Yep, see. Playing his uh, third game for his new province, John Cooney. Lenserman by birth, Connaught by trade for a couple of seasons. Andrea Lovotti in the lineout. Well taken by Zebra. Fioli. Taken on by Renato Giamarelli. Johan Mer, the South African, who'll be Italian qualified pretty soon. Second turnover by Ulster, taken nicely. Pietau. Well, immense strength by the All Black. Cooney gets it away to Callum Black, inside to Henderson. Well shackled by David Cissé. Luke Marshall, that's a good pass. Good work by John Diesel again. Well, if the referee had looked, I think he would have seen a couple of Italians offside there, particularly outside half. Carlo Canna, still with Ulster, but still inside their own half. Lelia Fano runs into a couple of tight forwards. Cooney, Marshall, Trimble, nicely done. Pietau, but speculative. Louis Ludwig does well. Bunched off a would-be tackler. Off he went. Set up well by Ludwig. Cooney, Callum Black. Good presentation by Ulster's loose head prop. Andrew, Marshall, a little bit more promising. Now Darren Cave delayed the pass nicely. Out on the far side is Matthew Ray. This is better by the visitors. Ayu needs to hang on to the ball now in the tackle, and he does. Lelia Fano. Trimble. Just wasn't able to control it, Andrew Trimble, but much more encouraging for Ulster. Yeah, for Ulster, it's just about possession. We've seen what they can construct when they have enough time on the ball. They've got threats in those wider channels, either go through the phases and create those mismatches or look to create those overlaps in the wider channels. They've done it very effectively, but just a couple of little individual errors has just uh, let, uh, let them down, and that's created the turnover of possession, and Zebra have used it very efficiently when they've had it. Well, there's a chap in the PA system, I think he's uh, broadcasting to somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere. He's a bit on the log side, but never mind. Just ten and a half minutes gone, also trailing by three points to nil. Last time these sides met toward the end okay. of the season in the Kingspan Stadium, Ulster rattled up nearly 70 points. 68-21 the score in favour of the home Come side. My lads left. They have a bit to go yet. Yep, happy there. Okay, good spacing, no pre engagement. First scrum of the afternoon. Ulster, incidentally, nearly a stone a man heavier. The average weight of the Zebra pack is 17 stone. Fresh. Ulster, 17 13. Bind! Hold. Yeah. Okay, we're already in. Three calls, wait for the calls before we go into the next stage. Yep. 
Mike Adams and asking him to do it again. This is uh, Marcello Violi, 23 years of age, capped five times by Italy. Most recently against Fiji in June of this year. I'll, I'll, I'll set back when I'm ready. Dario, Dario. Crouch! Bind! <laughs> Bind straight on the shoulder. Well, a free kick against Ulster for a little bit of an early engaging there. This is a Tommaso Bonnie, the curly haired centre. Spill forward, and it's going to be Ulster's scrum. That was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? Yeah, just poor execution there, pretty basic skills, putting the ball out in front of the man and just getting a little bit uh, ahead of themselves in that wider channel and Ulster will breathe a sigh of relief there. Have an opportunity now to, to get some possession okay, inside ashes, Zebra calls, Territory. Referee just sure talking that through that the sequence that they're looking for from this uh, scrum and very clear that he wants them to obey each instruction that he gives as he takes them through the stages to complete a successful scrum. Yeah, the second scrum in row, he's had a word with Rodney Ayew. Now he's come round to the Ulster loose head side, the Crouch. side from which the ball is going to be put into the scrum by John Cooney. Three engage. Three engage. Uh, Ulster are certainly on the wrong side of the referee, rightly or wrongly, and that's the second free kick they've given away for early engagement. I don't know what he expects of them, but obviously they're not doing what he wants. Yeah, when they're calling the uh, the bind, uh, they're engaging. Early bind and engagement before he's made the call is what they're saying. Well, so we'll have to uh, curb their enthusiasm in this vitally important aspect of the game. Did you say there? You happy that space, Talk ticking away. 13 minutes gone. Three 0 to the home side. They'll be pleased with that. Crouch. Just right. touch and go before the start of the season, whether we'd even see a zebra team playing. Set. Well, so there's extra weight, hasn't made any difference. Canna gets it away. Good tackle by Luke Marshall on the Matteo Minozzi, another young man rated highly by Italian head coach Conor O'Shea. David Cece, who had spells with London Irish and with Bath, sets it up. Good work by Ian Henderson. He's uh, turned over Marcello Violi. Zebra regained possession. Canna, extra men out here if they can move this. Tackle by Darren Cave, assisted by Lelia Fano. Violi again, Cano. Taken on by Cistellini, the tight head prop. Here's this Cano, who's been busy. Stopped by Sean Reedy. Another turnover by Ulster, that's the third one, that seems to be working. Cave. Little chip for Andrew Trimble to chase, and across comes Minozzi, and he gathers. And Trimble couldn't quite get him into touch. And the Italians are on the counter-attack yet again. And again, it's uh, Matteo Bellini causing Ulster problem. They have an overlap here. Hooker Fabiani couldn't get it away. Violi. Cano, no, I was just about to say no willingness to kick, but now they do kick, and it's a very good kick. My goodness, that's a cracker. Cave, the Pietau, will he kick? Absolutely not. Good support by Cave. Now it's Trimble, the captain. Little chip and chase by Andrew Trimble. Good back up there by Ulster. John Cooney, the first man there. Great chance now for the visitors. There you go, hurtling into that Against. ruck and it's been turned over. That was a genuine chance for Ulster, and they've turned it over again. Henderson has a cut himself. Tackle by Jean Maroli. Yep. Cooney. Luke Marshall. He did a man outside, and there's still men there. Sean Reedy needs to give it. Gets it to Lilia Fano. Strong enough, but bundled into touch. Good defending by Zebra, but good to see Ulster on the attack. Yeah, again, showing that they've uh, got the armory out wide to create those spaces and maybe created a three on two, maybe through the hands would have been the better option on that one, but excellent cover defence just to deny Leo Lofano in the corner. Got a report coming in from the assistant referee and in discussions now to see which way that goes. At Thoman Park, it's uh, now Munster 27, Cardiff 16. Cardiff have been in the lead, but Munster have picked everything up. Okay, Miss Captain. 
Oh, oh sorry. Uh, we've got a tackle without the ball. Kate's gone through. We've played him late. Okay. Cool. It's going to be a penalty back. Yeah. The referee just uh, saying to say the zebra that, skipper that, Tommaso Castello that, that there was a somebody was tackled without the ball. Ulster have got the penalty. Andrew Trimble will have to decide what he wants done with it. And look at John Cooney's a left footed kicker. It's the right side of the field for him. I'm wondering will he be thinking about going into touch? Tackle without the ball. Yeah, well, with, with possession, they've shown they can break down this zebra defence, but will they look for that three points just to get something on the board and get some momentum going there in discussions at the minute about what option they're going to take? Yeah, Ultimately, Andrew Trimble will make that decision. Well, has that decision been made? Yes, it has, because it's going to be Christian Liliafano who's going to put the ball as close to the zebra line as possible. 17 minutes gone, only score on the board so far to the home side. But the last 10 minutes or so, Ulster certainly have enjoyed a lot of territory and a lot of possession. But they yeah, need to turn both of those okay. into points. This is Andrew Trimble. Well, there was that, yes. Keep it open. Ulster support player might have been Darren Cave, absolutely manhandled without the ball. John Andrew. Again, Pete Brown wins it. He's done well, well. out of touch in this, this is his first game of the season. Here goes John Andrew, John Dizel lends his way to it. Sabre squeezing Ulster toward the far touchline. That's one stop, man. Cooney. Luke Marshall. Gets across the gain line. Cooney again. Here comes Sean Reedy. Better stuff by Ulster. Quicker ball. Lilia Fano to Pietau. Ferocious strength to Trimble, the skipper. And Trimble's got over. Great try by Andrew Trimble as he equals Roger Wilson's record of Ulster caps. Cap number 221 and try number 48 in this league. Yeah, and actually created out of nothing. Not one of the opportunities that they, they went through phases to create. It was, yeah, it was really defenders were in front of it. But again, it's just that freakish power that Charles Pieter possesses. Also to go through a couple of phases, get some decent quality possession out of it. But it's that ability to beat defenders, to break through tackles and still have the ability to offload in the tackle that's crucial. Excellent support line by Trimble coming off the shoulder, very direct and unable to, to stop him from that sort of distance. Well, Pieta, the man who was just impossible to hold on to and Trimble's finishing was terrific. He needed all that strength of his and all that experience of uh, 70 Irish internationals and now 221 Ulster games. John Cooney to take his season's tally for Ulster up to 30 points. Paddy, can you give me a quick time check, please? Very nicely Paddy struck by John Cooney, looking a wee bit healthier from an Ulster perspective. <laughs> First quarter nearly gone, Ulster leading by seven points to three. The clock's here just saying and they'll be glad to have converted one of the opportunities they've created. There have been a number of them in this first half, but just uh, small little errors have robbed them of, of any scores, but that one was a little bit more clinical, and they'll be happy to have uh, put Zebrae back now after a very good start from them, and standing under their posts, uh, quite familiar for them, but... Uh, that confidence was starting to grow for them and also be happy to have got some points. Cannon's given that plenty of height. Knocked backward and then knocked forward by Ulster. And Zebra have gained possession. That was not a great reception of the restart by advantage the visitors. Canna, referee saying advantage was over. This is the man who's caused Ulster problem and he's still doing it. They seem, well, in keep of stopping Mattia Bellini. Canna. Shistolini, the tight head prop. Tackle! Well stopped by Ulster. Violi gets it wide. This is the fullback, Matteo Minozzi. Still in field. This is good play once again by Zebra. Coming straight back and taking advantage of Ulster's mistake at the restart. Castello, tackled by his opposite number, Luke Marshall. Violi. Canna. Pete Brown did not buy the dummy. Good defending by Ulster's second row. Hold. Ulster looking for a fourth turnover, not getting it this time. Good driving there by big George Biaggi. Viola. Canna. No hands. 
It was Gimaroli took it on. Violi again, and again, Canna. Castello taken down by Sean Reedy. Viola, Canna, nicely done back inside. Ulster pushed back into the 22. And again, a penalty is given away. This time it's Matthew Ray, but Mike Adamson is giving Ulster, well, nothing at the breakdown, but perhaps they don't deserve it. Yeah, also a uh, fine line. They've given away a couple of penalties at the breakdown, but they are competing very well. We've seen a couple of turnovers. Uh, Henderson, I think, and, and John dacel has been in there. And they are getting some good returns from competing heavily at the breakdown, but probably just need to think about where they are in the pitch when they're contesting those and in that sort of kicking radius, maybe a, be a little bit more conservative in that facet of play because it is the opportunities that uh, Zebra are getting to score points from those penalties from Rucks. Well, the Ulster squad had a pretty tortuous route to get here to Parma yesterday. Their flight was delayed by a number of hours because of a, yeah. a malfunction in Belfast. And once that was sorted out, they had to stop in Antwerp and get it sorted out properly. So instead of arriving early afternoon, they didn't get here until early evening. This to close the gap to a single point. Carlo Cannon got the first attempt, missed with the second. This is pretty straightforward. And he's made light of that. So 23 minutes played. Zebra six and Ulster seven. And you always expect a spirited performance from Zebra at home and this occasion proving no different. That first 20 minutes always hotly contested from a physical perspective. Just Ulster need to ensure that they can uh, dominate through possession, which seems to be the key. They're making those breaks, but just need that ball in hand to be able to create those opportunities. Put long by Christian Elia Fano. Fiore cannot decide not to kick. Good solid work in the middle of the park there by Tommaso Castello. This is the hooker, Olivero Fabiani. Good defending by Ulster. They've got the home side bottled up at the moment. That could all change. Good work by Luke Marshall. Now that has to be released, and it has been released. Certainly the referee happy that it's released. Violi shaping up to kick. And he gets it away pretty decently. And Ulster will have the line on 25 minutes coming up. Yeah, we're seeing both teams playing a lot of football in their own 22, hesitant to kick, and when they do kick, they seem to be kicking for touch as opposed to those contestable kicks that we, we see employed from the box area around that 22. Ian Henderson starting his first game of the season for Ulster. Likewise, John Andrew. Great take by Brian Cooney. Pietau into Carlo Canna. Cooney again. Matthew Ray, good thundering young by the young flank forward. Cooney. Lelia Fano, cave. Nice little show of the ball. Well, well, it was too much in front of Callum Black. Referee playing advantage, and Zebra might be able to take advantage. Well pulled in by Canna. Clever stuff. This is Giulio Basenji, one of uh, four try scorers in the back division against the Kings last week. Viola, this is great stuff, Bonnie. He got outside John Dizel. And with ball in hand, Zebra are playing some wonderful rugby. Andrea Lovati. Ulster offside. Must be at least penalty number six, if not seven, against Ulster in the opening 35 minutes. Yeah, and four of those have been within kicking range at least, and I think they'll take the opportunity to go for goal again uh, uh, directly in front, so you know, 45 metres or so, and should be within range. Uh, some excellent play from, from Zebra. Not only have they been up for the fight physically, but there seems to be a real structure as to what they're trying to do and a very good understanding across the team of, of what they're trying to do. A lot of continuity and selection, some of that due to a lack of depth in the squad, but they do look like a very organised team that know what they're trying to implement. 
Matthew Ray getting a little bit of treatment. Don't know that it's too serious, but we'll soon we'll soon find out. Kieran Treadwell and Nick Timoney, the men on the bench. Nick Timoney likely to come in if anything serious is wrong with uh, Matthew Ray. And they have indicated that Carlo Canna is going to go for a goal and try to get his side back in the lead again. Got his first cap for Italy against Scotland in 2015 and most recently against Australia this summer. Played all four games in the World Cup as a replacement a couple of uh, years ago. Well, this is the uh, toughest for Carlo Canna in terms of distance from the post, but it's pretty straight. And there was a little bit of a breeze which seems to have died down, so that will help him as well. This with uh, almost 27 minutes played to restore the Zebra lead. Oh, he's got underneath that nicely. And he's missed another one. Well, again, <coughs> Ulster will consider themselves fortunate to have got away with that. Yeah, two kickable penalties missed now, and that scoreboard could have had a different complexion. Again, it was just simple handling errors from Ulster that create those turnovers that Zebra are thriving off. And uh, a really tight contest, this one. And Ulster will certainly need to try and get that focus back for this 12, 13 minutes. Focus on those core skills to ensure they're not giving away easy turnovers. Taken in by Renato Giamaroli for Zebra. Fioli to Canna. Castello, the captain. The only again gets back into that pivotal position quickly. Canna tries his luck. The only again. Andrea Lavotti brought down by Ulster. Slower ball now. David Sisi. Canna created a bit of width there. First tackle was missed. That's good defending by Ulster. Canna again, back inside. That is Castello, the captain. Menozzi, very quick feet. Vicenji. Violi. Hooker Fabiani. All the pressure now coming from the home side. And their turn to give away the penalty in the tackle. And with a player down injured in the middle of the park, I think he's okay. It's Carlo Canna down and up again. Glad to say. Look, Marshall in the wars, I think. Yeah, and again, getting that, uh, that turnover at the breakdown. They have got some good returns, getting men in there and competing for it. Canna looking for a, uh, a referral. Feels he was probably taken out late from that inside ball. He takes it to the line and he does over... The offer those opportunities inside and out and yeah, the they're getting some returns on that it's been reviewed by the TMO and feels there's nothing Neil Patterson very quick to have a look at it and said there's nothing to worry about so uh, a bit of a stoppage there Pete Brown just struggling a wee bit he's got a bit of a bang to the head and he may well have to go off for 10 minutes he must stay off for 10 minutes even though even if you're cleared he does look a little bit wobbly, Pete Brown. We're not seeing him on camera at the moment. Yes, we are now. So Michael Webb will take Pete Brown off, and one hopes that he'll be back again. In the meantime, Kieran Treadwell has come on for Ulster. <laughs> Referee is asking uh, Dr. Michael Webb and. Peter Brown to go to the side of the pitch and walk around rather than stay on the field of play. Just need to wait until your player leaves the field. Okay, Ulster line out functioned particularly well today. Most of it going to Pete Brown, so I'll have a change here. That was Matthew Ray who did it. Not altogether sure that was straight, but Ulster got away with it. Louis Luna threatening to go on the narrow side. Well, they have knocked that one backward. They're getting away with it. Well, in fact, they didn't knock it backward. That's sloppy stuff by Ulster. They make, they're making too many fundamental errors in terms of handling. 
Yeah, perfect conditions, and uh, I think that's about the fourth individual handling error. Not under a huge amount of pressure either, but uh, referee just having a quick chat to the players, telling them that captain's their representative to pass any messages on, not happy with the amount of talk towards them. Good gap, good stability last time, expect the same. Just 10 minutes to go to the interval and Ulster clinging on to a one point lead. Zebra outside half, Kyle O'Connor with two kicks out of four. Zebra might have been in a much more comfortable position had he been on target. Pre engaged. Same as them over there, going straight in. Well, Mike Adamson is nothing if not consistent. He's penalised her. Freed the uh, zebra for pre-engaging at the scrum. Pieto into the home half. That's been kicked through. You're not allowed to do that. That's a penalty to Ulster. Cooney, Lelia Fano. Couldn't quite get it away, but they'll come back for the penalty. Yeah, playing under advantage. Uh, a little bit optimistic with that offload, but with penalty advantage, you may as well have a try. They'll come back. Certainly the within range, you'd What's feel, that? but. They might employ the tactic of uh, going to the corner again. It worked for them last time round. Go kick the ball on the rock. Yeah, well, I've heard that uh, the Scottish accent of Mike Adams is saying, don't kick the ball on the rock. And he found out a kick to touch. Well, that's curled round pretty nicely. That's not a bad kick at all. And as the, the sun comes out on the far side of the field, Ulster have the line out. They have the sun behind them. Boys on. Okay, yeah. Do you get the rest of them in line? Can I be a front man? Matteo Bellini has been a bit of a live Nine. wire. You must stay back ten until the line it's over. Yeah. Until the line it's over, back with them. John Cooney's retreated ten meters from the line out, and he takes it in the outside half position. There goes Luke Marshall into the welcoming arms of the zebra midfield. Henderson. Just a tackle. Good leg drive by Ulster. Referee's given the penalty to Ulster. Now it's Pietau. Ferociously strong. New advantage. Still advantage to the home side. Another penalty given. John Dizel. Lelia Fano. Are you? I don't know how he got that away. Well picked up by John Andrew. And that's a real shambles in the middle of the park. Handling errors abounding, but Ulster have got the penalty. And you would imagine from that range, John Cooney will go Captain, for the post. Got two penalties, got tackling early here, tackling early. Yeah, over you there. think so, given how easy it is. They've kicked to the corner on the longer range ones, but there. this would be a simple three good. points, and it would be a bold yeah. call by Ulster not to take them. Yeah. Yeah. Post, guys. Uh, John Andrew playing his 32nd game for Ulster, and he's. Uh, it's only the, the fifth game that he's actually started. <laughs> he's made great strides in the last couple of seasons, learning every week from both Rory Best and from Rob Herring, who's been rested. Young Adam yeah. McBurney, former no, Irish uh, under-20 Junior World Cup stars on the bench for his very first match day squad, so we'll see if he gets on. <laughs> Seven minutes to the they interval. Are, are John bad. Cooney to stretch the Ulster lead by three further points. But, yeah, but, but you can't start appealing for this. <laughs> nice little chip by John Cooney. Three more points for Ulster into double figures. Half time beckoning. Zebra six and Ulster ten. Yeah, a lot of changes in personnel, but that's been the case throughout this season for Ulster and hasn't affected their ability to have players in the right place. It really has just been individual, not systemic errors that have let Ulster down. And if they can tighten that up, they'll know they've got the ability to score points against this uh, very spirited Zebra team. But crucial uh, last few minutes before halftime. Well, let's see if Ulster can make a better fist of the restart than they did the last time. Well taken in by John Diesel. Needs some support. Cooney. Marshall. Good work by Marshall. Lydia Fano, Henderson. At pace. Off he went. Good take by IU and a good offload by the 
three times capped Irish prop. Cooney again. Marshall decides that's to been kick. Touch and fight. That's been touched and fight. And I think that was touched by a zebra hand, and Mike Adamson agrees. Matthew Minozzi. Just over five minutes remaining. Well, there's a huge gap there, and again, it's this man Bellini, and he is causing havoc in the Ulster ranks. And Ian Henderson intercepts. Play on, says the referee. Matthew Ray, quite surprised to get the pass, but he's managed to hang on to it. Good call on the narrow side. That was knocked forward. Also, I think, claiming that George Biaggi did it deliberately. But the referees decided it was accidental. Well, this fellow, uh, Mattia Bellini, has been the most impressive player out there, I think. Yeah, he's a big man, but an eye for the gap as well. Sees it on that occasion, and maybe a little bit of blocking there. If that had been a try, you expect Oswald sort of us to have a look at that. But Andrew Trimble, very cleverly in the last passage of play, had a quick word with the referee about how quick that Zebra defensive line was coming up. And it'll be interesting yeah, to see if he focuses on that now. This time last year, also had won yeah. four in a row, then they won five in a row, and then the wheels came off to a certain extent. Next Friday, it's Connaught at the Kingspan Stadium, a game you can see live with us here on uh, BBC Northern Ireland. And then the following Friday, it's the visit of Wasp for the first game in the European Champions Cup. And that's the game, like all the games in the Champions Cup, you'll be able to hear on BBC Radio Ulster with us. It's been an entertaining game, a lot of errors, but a lot to make uh, the crowd set up and applaud. Four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes to the interval. Okay. Yeah, that's That's one Glorious game. day here in Palmer. A lot of problems with the scrums. Let's see if we can get the ball in and away without much of a to-do or indeed a, a free kick or a penalty. Crouch. Dario Cistellini, the only change from the side that won a week ago for the Zebra. On the tight head side of the scrum. They seem to have got that one right. Andrew Trimble's come round. Here goes Darren Cave. Well, there was nobody close enough to him to receive the pass, which he thought about. And surely Zebra offside across that 10 metre line. And again, it was uh, Biaggi. Speculative Luke Marshall inside to Reedy, who's got. Terrific amount of pace. Cooney again, well away. Henderson runs into his opposite number, David Sisi. Cooney, nearly a fan away quickly. Matty Ray takes it forward. Into a wee bit of space. And that bounced handily enough and into touch, but it's going to be a line out to uh, Zebra with about three and a half minutes remaining. Pace has dropped a wee bit, hasn't it? Yeah, the, it started off uh, at a hectic pace, but just uh, a few errors here and there, some issues at scrum, uh, players taking a knee to get a little bit of water in quite hot conditions, so hasn't really had the flow that we may have expected from the, the first three or four minutes that we saw. Well, Munster have secured a bonus point win against the Cardiff Blues at Thulman Park. Final score there, Munster 39 and Cardiff Blues uh, 16. So, a fairly predictable home win, although they had to work pretty hard in the last quarter by, by Munster. Ulster will have to work very hard in the second half if they're going to come away I think it's his arm. with anything resembling maximum points from this one. Right, what are we doing, lads? I'm going to go back to the lane. Bit of a stoppage for the Zebra loosehead prop, Andrea Lovotti. Been pretty regular in the Italian uh, squad for the nah, last couple of seasons, uh, the and he seems to be fine. Yeah, but it's going yeah, to be a, a line out. The clock has stopped with uh, just over okay, three minutes remaining. Hey, is he going to play on, or is he going to wait to see if Andrea Lavotti is going to be fit to continue? He's okay. getting a fair bit of treatment. The Time magic spray. 
they're, they're, go they're going to carry on as if he uh, I'm not waiting was for playing. An it's his arm injury. I'm not waiting for an arm injury. Mike Adelson saying he's not waiting for an arm injury. That'll be encouraging for Andrea Lobotti. He'd love that. His mummy won't be too pleased either. Well won. A zebra away and no more. <laughs> Canna into a big space there. Somebody needs to claim it. And it's Andrew Trimble. And Trimble's got away. He's got Sean Reedy with him. Good tackle by Tommaso Boni. Dizel. Good little break there by Christian Leafano. No! Cooney in quickly to the base of that. Andrew. Louis Luduk. Manhandled by Giovanni Lacata, this very promising ball. flanker. A mauled situation has developed, so if he blows his whistle, Zebra will get the put into the scrum. Also going to try to winkle it back, and that's great defending by Zebra. The excellent work. You just need two or three seconds uh, of being upright to get that maul call, and once that's called, very difficult to find a way out of it. Players then don't have to roll away if it does hit the ground, and they certainly tend not to. And an opportunity for Zebra to get the ball back. Not Probably not enough time left to really make an impact, but uh, they've shown like they're capable of running from deep, certainly got the appetite for it, and their back division has performed pretty well, particularly out wide. Okay. Well, Andrew Trimble has lost none of his uh, aggression. A minute and a half to go, may well be the Space last, the last ses, ses piece of this uh, somewhat disjointed first half. Just down below us is seated the Italian director of rugby now, Conor O'Shea, former Irish fullback. Crouch! Bind! Green gauge, second time, green gauge. Well, the referee has said that for the second time, Zebra have uh, pre engaged. So the, the second, second time it's not a free kick, the first time it's a free kick, second time it's a penalty. So. He's applying the laws pretty strictly, Mike Adamson, and rather than find themselves maybe behind a little bit, also could be extending their lead. In fairness, he did give the warning at the last scrum that the next uh, uh, infringement of that manner would result in a penalty, and it's Ulster that have fortuitously got the opportunity to get these three points. It's the second time. They're very difficult when you've got a lot of... Uh, enthusiastic young men there who just want to get on and do what they do best and do what they enjoy most and that's scrummage you've got to hold back until the referee's happy which doesn't seem really fair sometimes anyway as we come up to the end of the the first half here at the uh, Stadio Lanfrancio John Cooney oh he's kicking well John Cooney puts it right between the posts and Ulster now leading by 13 points to six. I can hear Neil Patterson just confirming to referee Mike Adamson that the kick was before the 40 minutes had actually gone. Last play. So when the ball goes uh, dead or play stops from here, it'll be half time. The Zebra try to regain from this kickoff. Oh, that's a clever little one by Carlo Canna. Knocked back on tidily. This could be interesting. And also managed to knock it forward. But that's the end of it. And uh, not exactly a satisfactory first half from an Ulster perspective. They have the satisfaction of knowing that they're turning round some uh, seven points ahead. All but five, courtesy of the boot of uh, John Cooney. Quick thoughts in the first half, Ryan? Yeah, lots of endeavour showed early on, and it set the tone for what we thought was going to be an expansive game, but that continuity has been robbed by a number of individual errors. Quite a lot of penalties emanating out of the breakdown and the scrum, which has robbed this game of any real flow. Ulster have made a number of uh, line breaks, capitalised the one time. They'll feel they've got the winning on this game if they can just tighten up a few of those aspects. Well, if it tightened it up, they uh, could and possibly should go on to win this game, but by no means certain. So, half-time score here. In Parma is a Zebra 6 and Ulster 13. Well, Peter Brown is not coming back. Uh, Kieran Treadwell, who replaced him 10 minutes before the interval, has come back out for the second half. And I have a feeling that uh, Zebra may well have made uh, a change uh, up front. And did they have the uh, Ethiopian gentleman, Sammy Panico, who's now played 10 times for Italy, has come on wearing number 17. 
at loose head prop. Christian Liliapano with the restart. Stolen by Ulster, good work by Andrew Trimble. Ulster really could do with a bit of a zip at the start of this uh, second half. Here goes Sean Reedy trying to add that zip into Tommaso Boney, the centre. Cooney changes direction, Trimble. Cooney again, Piatau, they'll have to look at him. What strength, taken down by Panico. Cooney. Tough pass, but it was well taken. Nicely done, away by Trimble, John Andrew. He won't like to think about that one. Andrew Trimble whipped it away, maybe a little bit too quickly for his hooker. And Ulster have wasted yet another good attacking chance. Yeah, story of the first half overflowing into the start of the second half, going through some really nice patterns, making uh, some good advantage lines, yeah, and then uh, just unfortunate yeah. handling error lets them down again. And let's see whether yeah. they can get the scrum right on this opportunity. Yeah, Zebra got the best of those early uh, short arm penalties, but it turned against them towards the end of that second half. And hopefully, there's some more consistency uh, in these scrums to get the game flowing. Marcello Violi. First scrum of the second half. The last scrum ended in an Ulster penalty, which gave them three much needed points. Bit more discipline there. The lighter pack of the Zebra pushing Ulster off the ball. Busenji comes in. And again, Zebra looking to move the ball. Yeah, Bill and at the contest. Uh, referee has decided that Ulster whipped the scrum round illegally. He's quite fond of giving a scrum penalty, this fellow Mike Adamson, isn't he? We certainly haven't seen too many completed on their own terms, and uh, that's what's <coughs> contributing to the stop-start nature of the game. But he has been clear in his instructions, so up to the players now to respond to that. Well, Conor Canna has responded with an excellent kick out of hand, and he's taken play midway between the Ulster 10-metre line and 22. So that all came from an Ulster mistake. Had yeah. Ulster not, not knocked the ball forward, they wouldn't have had the scrum and they wouldn't have been penalised and they wouldn't have conceded some 60 odd metres. Oh, you can, you can try and the Sabre not in any great rush to come up to this lineup. No. We're not going to walk in and go straight up and need you in and set. Yeah. The referee's not allowing them just to amble up and then take a very quick throw. He wants them in and he wants them settled, he wants the spaces observed. A metre between each player and a metre between the two, the two line-outs. Well won. Canna, Boni, Vicenji, huge amount of pace, he's skinned Darren Cave. This could be interesting. Good support play from his scrum half. They need somebody there, they've got push, the push. Violas there. Canna. Inside the flanker, Johan Meyer from South Africa. Canna again. This is good play by Zebra, and that was just knocked forward by replacement prop Sammy Panico. You. Well, you've got to give the Zebra full marks for their attacking. Yeah, set play as well, and uh, pre-rehearsed, and it came off perfectly, able to find that space in the wider channel, and then, unfortunately, their turn to, to undo all the good work they've done by... You know, a speculative offload and, and poor handling and a uh, very good initial break from them and just unable to position the support again. players to finish that off what would have been a sensational try. Keep it square. All right, are we going to get a, a scum without a penalty or an infringement? Rodney well, IU and the Ulster tight head side had a thundering run of the opening few seconds Five. of the game has been relatively quiet since no 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 yeah we're too far away lads <laughs> okay happy that distance now yeah yeah happy mike adamson saying that the front rows were engaging yeah. from uh, yeah, too far working. away from each other crunch bind Set. Get that elbow up. Keep that elbow up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Well, he's telling Rodney Ayu to keep his, uh, his elbow up. And it's stuck there. Now Ulster have got away. Look, Marshall. Hold. 
Henderson. Another man the Zebra have kept well shackled. Delia Fano. Little switch now to Pietau. What a wallop he's given that one. And it's bounced handily enough for Zebra. And here's Minozzi, the fullback. And again, he's got pace. Kieran Treadwell quick enough to make the tackle. First man, no issues. Ulster stolen that one. Sean Reedy's on his own. Ulster a bit slow to react. Now Pietau again. Marshall. Wonderful defence there, and Marshall knocks it forward in the tackle. Back in the Ulster side, but the offence will stand, and Zebra will have to put into the scrum. They're very quick up, Zebra. Yeah, they are. They've been in, in very impressive defensively with their line speed. Again, John Daisel over the ball, turnover not for the, for the first time, and then excellent tackle, reading the situation well, out to in and putting in a really good shot that caused that turnover. Again, also be disappointed that uh, their handling has let them down, but that one at least you would consider a forced penalty. Very good shot. Almost well, six minutes played. The score as it was at the interval. The other game today, Munster with a bonus point win. Scored 26 points in the second half. They were 16-13 <coughs> down at home to Cardiff at the interval and rattled up uh, four tries in the second half. 39-16 at Thoman Park. At half time here, it was six to Zebra, 13 to Ulster. Two penalties by Zebra outside half. Carlo Canna to a well taken try by Andrew Trimble. Conversion and two penalties from uh, John Cooney. But it has been yet another disjointed Ulster performance in Italy. Three weeks ago, they were 21 0 up, remember, against uh, Benetton Treviso. And had to work hard to hang on for the victory. Time back on. Well, Ulster are certainly winning games, they're not rattling up the bonus points, and other sides are doing just that. Well, this, uh, this scrummage is deteriorating into the realms of farce. Julio Basenji directly behind the Zebra scrum, interestingly, and he may well come into it. Set. All the push. No hook. No hook. Ball wasn't hooked by the Zebra, taken quickly by Sean Reedy. Now he's got a bit of help. Cooney to Callum Black. Cooney again. That was a, a rather rushed pass by his outside half, Christian Nelia Fano, and it's allowed Zebra to capitalise, and now they're on the front foot. And Canna, where's that going to go? That looks as if it might be a very handy kick. Absolutely flattened Louis Lurick, and he looks like he's been hurt. He got absolutely clattered. Here comes Zebra looking to press home the advantage. If they shift this, they have Ulster outflanked. And here is the danger man, Bellini. Minozzi. Good tackle by Luke Marshall. Louis Ludwig is down and not looking in good shape. Canna saying there's nobody at home. This could be interesting. Gathered, scored. <laughs> Wonderfully taken try by the Zebra back row forward. Yeah, Carlo Cano realising where the space is. Ulster have two players down, receiving attention. That created the space out wide, but uh, top points for the execution of that very good kick, perfectly placed and a very good take to get over the line. Some excellent work from Zebra. Well, that's great anticipation and an appreciation of space by Carlo Cano. And lurking out wide was a Giovanni Lacata. He gets his first try of the season. Yeah, and an Ulster turnover that uh, led to Zebra establishing that field position and being able to execute that perfectly placed kick to get the points.
Well, there'd be serious concern for Louis Lulick. I'd like to have another look at that uh, at that collision. Is also prepared to make a couple of changes in the front row. Dean Herbst and Andy Warwick coming on. Carlo Canna. That's a good strike. And it's an even game in Zebra 13 and Ulster 13. And on come Messrs. Herbst and Warwick. And off goes uh, Rodney Ayew and Callum Black. Yeah, Rodney Ayew looks like a, uh, an injury around the knee, maybe muscular as he's limping off. Louis Luddick sitting up again, which is good to see. It looked like a head clash there, both players upright. Nothing sinister in, I think, just the bounce of the ball as both players approached it. Uh, and uh, he's sitting up now and looks to be about to, to take his feet. Well, there was that uh, cleverly placed cross-field kick. And a great bit of anticipation there by Giovanni Lacati, just 20 years of age, the Italian uh, under-20 international. Louis Ludwig is up. And Rob Little has come on for his, has coming on, or is on, for his 10th Ulster appearance. Time back on. Sabre have made a replacement in, in the second row, wearing number 19, uh, Leonardo Krumov, who's played for the emerging Italy side, is on for uh, George Biaggi. That's gone into touch, but it was uh, inside the 22. George Cooney protesting to the man on the near side that he's gone probably about 10 metres too far. Well, it's going to be tough from here on in for this Ulster side, Ryan, because they haven't really performed at all. Yeah, not an ideal start in the second half. The line-out has functioned well all game and using that as a source of possession. Look, Marshall gets into the opposition half. Cooney, Diesel. Well taken down by his opposite number, Giamarelli. Cave. Managed to slip the ball inside cleverly. Cooney again, Lilia Fano. Good work by Matthew Ray. Huge tackle by Oliviero Fabiani on John Diesel. Kieran Treadwell is in there, and I think Zebra have turned that one over. Yes, they have. Canna for another clever kick to the corner. May just have gone a wee bit too far. And dotted down by Rob Little for the 22 drop out. Canna, I think, has tweaked something. Down injured. 11 minutes gone in the second half. Honours even. Toss of a coin time, really. Is ever starting to kick a lot more ball away? Trying yeah, to put he's, he's Ulster awesome. under pressure. They've seen that they're prepared to play from deep and really uh, try to get them in their own 22 playing out of there. Referee playing on. Now. He's told Chris and Elliot Fano just to get on with it, please. Into a wee bit of space, but there's the danger man, last man you want to kick to, Bellini. Johan Meyer. Oh, and away goes Marazzi. Steps inside Pieta, Bellini is going to score. What a try by the Zebra. And into the lead for the first time since the third minute. And they get a second try. And Mattia Bellini really is showing his potential. And Ulster are in danger of losing their unbeaten record if they don't fuck up their ideas. The yeah, outstanding bit of finishing, some electric pace by the Nazi there and a very clever support line again. It's those offloads in the tackle that create that uncertainty and then that finishing... Uh, Prowess out wide, excellent little step inside, kept the ball alive. Questionable pass, but certainly an assistant referee of the TMO hasn't asked to have a look at it. Zebra will take it all day long. Well, I'd like to have another look at that. That looked a wee bit on the forward side to me. I don't know that Mike Adamson is inclined to go to the truck to hear what his uh, fellow Scott Neil Patterson says.
Well, he's been threatening to do that since the very start of this game. And what a time to do it. I'm just looking down, Conor O'Shea, who've been discussing the merits of Mattia Bellini as a, a finisher, has looked up at us and has given us a little grin and a thumbs up. So I guess he'll be playing for Italy in the Six Nations, I'll not be surprised. No Carlo Canep. It's his half-back partner. And Marcelo Bayoli has nailed the conversion. And having been 13-6 up at half-time, Ulster find themselves 20-13 down. A lot of rugby to be played, but at the moment, you have to put your money on the home side one. Well, as Italy know they're in a contest, and the crowd have responded to those last two tries. That one a sensational one, and the atmosphere really cranking up now. Up to Ulster to respond. They haven't dealt particularly well with the line speed uh, that Zebra have had defensively. They need to start mixing the game up a little bit more, maybe put a few little kicks through, try and delay the speed of that uh, of that line, or it's a little bit deeper in the pocket, kick for territory a little bit more, change the tactics up. Well, Bellini once again gets away from a lot of pretty weak Ulster tackling. Giovanni Lacata, the other try scorer for the home team. Fioli, Canna. Out wide is uh, George Biaggi, so it must be David Sisi who's gone off the second row forward. And they're playing with a lot of confidence and a lot of competence too, Zebra. Yeah, when they play from their 22, they tend to go through uh, uh, a bit of sideways movement to try and create a little bit more space for the kicker and then they're happy to kick to touch muscle up defensively it's been a, a, one of the key aspects of their performance today has been their defensive line speed and their and the hits that they're putting in they'll look to continue that opportunity for Ulster now from set piece Nick Timoney's on for Ulster Luke Marshall Sean Reedy Henderson It's, uh, Sean Dysel has gone off for Ulster. Timoney again, scored a couple of tries last week in the man of the match performance. he will need to do something similar here. Good counter-rucking there by the Zebra, making life difficult for Ulster at the breakdown. Here goes Pieto. Trimble in there to help. Cooney back at number nine. Matthew Ray. All backwards. Backwards. Spilled by Ulster. Panico set it up for Zebra. Bellini at scrum half. Castello. This is the very quick Matteo Menozzi. Another man highly rated by Italian coach Conor O'Shea. Meyer. Biaggi. They are oozing confidence, this home side. Violi. Tana. Well taken by Pietal. Again, Andrew Trimble has to play the role of the flank forward. Kieran Treadwell. A little bit isolated. Trimble. Well, another unforced error by Ulster. They've given the ball away again. And that's gone directly into touch, but they'll come back for the knock-on. Yes, Ember again targeting the ball in that contact area when they get the opportunity to put a shot on and the ball's exposed. They certainly haven't missed it. Um, I think that'll be the tail of this game for Ulster when they do their reviews will be the amount of turnovers when they were in possession that have given Zebra these opportunities. And you can really sense the positivity, the body language within Zebra uh, put themselves in a great position to win this game with 23 minutes on the clock. Well... They lost against the Cheetahs a couple of weeks ago, but they scored a, a bonus point from four tries. They had a bonus point win a week ago against the Southern Kings. And at the moment, they're outscoring Ulster by two tries to one. And thoroughly deserving of this lead. Referee having a word with the Ulster 
front row. Not the biggest crowd in the world that Ulster have ever played in front of, but they're certainly making plenty of noise. Coming up to the end of the third quarter, and Ulster a converted try behind. And they need to find an extra 50% compared to what we've seen so far if they're going to win this game. And well, this would be well, a calamitous defeat for Ulster if it works out that way. Well, and games in the front row, that's a good Zebra scrum. There's nobody on the narrow side for Ulster. Andrew Trimble misses the tackle. And into touch it goes. And did it come off a Zebra hand or an Ulster hand? But that was a good scrum, a very quick pickup by Renato Gimaroli. Lads, it's just a knock on, there's no option off the line out. And the ball was knocked forward There's before no it went into touch. If the ball is knocked on into touch, then you get the option of taking the line out or the scrum. But because the ball was knocked on before it went into touch and it was played into touch, then Ulster will have the scrum. Almost 58 minutes played. 13 6 at half time to Ulster. And the wheels have come off a little bit. Big squeeze by Zebra. Nick Timoney at number eight controls. Luke Marshall gets up to halfway. Also need it quickly. Now they've got it. Lilia Fano. Pieta rode the tackle well. But they were lining up for him. Offside in the middle of the park by a mild Zebra. Mike Adams had missed it. His assistant's doing him no favours either. Cooney goes to ground. This and also get the penalty. 13 roll first. There's a chance legal, to get a little bit of uh, territory. Legal. Yeah, you're legal, 13 needs to roll. Yeah, probably just uh, out of range, kick for the corner. You'd feel somewhere around the 22 would be a, a good return from a midfield kick like this. And also just need to have some patience now. Go through. We've seen they can create opportunities with ball in hand. They just can't afford to keep this three? turnover rate going. It's robbing them of any opportunity to, to really get a foothold in the game. Another bad kick by Chris and Elia Fino. And Ulster just taking their time coming up to the lineout where John Andrew will throw. A number of changes. So everybody have to be familiar with the different calls. Well taken in. First by one hand, then by two by Big Ian Henderson. It's got to Grant. Ball's available. It's old. Push. Cooney. Timoney. Luke Marshall waits. Wasn't held, so had another little scramble. Henderson. And that's a good drive by the British and Irish Lion. Knocked forward. You get the feeling, Ryan, it's not Ulster's day. Yeah, security of the ball in the tackle uh, hasn't been what it needs to be at this level. And Zebra have targeted it. They're uh, again going to ground there. Just no ball security at ruck time, whether it be in the tackle, um, just not protecting it enough. And that's led to the to the turnovers that we've seen. They've probably turned over more ball in this game than they have the previous four games in total. And sometimes when you, you get into that pattern, it's hard just to, to snap out of it. But I'll need to do something as that clock continues to tick away there's a seven point margin they know they've got enough quality in their team but they need the ball um, and that possession will lead to line breaks and, and points on the ball but let's not discount the spirit that this zebra team have got can their their conditioning go the distance there's certainly been a stop start game which will play into their hands and a crucial scrum now deep in their own territory We're very tight on the offside okay so just work hard all the midfield three quarters of the game gone Ulster having been 13-6 up at the interval, 20 points to 13 behind, and 
Sebu looking to record a, a famous victory. Yeah, well, the referee just speaking to the midfield of Zebra and warning them that they're they're close to that line of, of offside in general play, and he'll need to follow through with that warning if that trend continues. Well, the Ulster supporters, as few as there are, would probably Brooks. say amen to that. Bind. Set. Come in. They've been very flat to the line on the, the near side of the field, and they're going to run this one, Canna. An overlap here. Tackle was by Darren Cave. Fioli, Canna's back in position again. Try scorer Giovanni Lacata is tackled close to the 22. Also trying to hold him up. He managed to get to ground. Canna. Well gathered in by Pietau. Cooney. Matthew Ray across the 10 meter line. 17 straight off Replacement prop forward uh, Sammy Panico, as we mentioned, of uh, Ethiopian extraction. Now an, an Italian international, has played uh, 10 times for Italy. And Italy are making another change in the front row. And uh, the Argentinian international, Eduardo Bello, who is an enormous love of a fellow, is coming on. And meanwhile, Ulster have uh, taken the option of kicking for goal. Cooney's kicked particularly well all season and in this match, and he'll look to add that three points and make a dent in that seven-point lead. <laughs> So what indeed has come the 21-year-old uh, Argentinian, Eduardo Bello. Well, his only cap against Uruguay last, last year. John Cooney with three successful kicks from three, a conversion and two penalties so far. And he really needs this one. He's given that a fair old clip. Oh, that's a wonderful kick by John Cooney. So also within a try of going ahead, we have about uh, 17 minutes remaining. 2016, though, to the home side. Yeah, pragmatic decision from Ulster. Plenty of time left on the clock. No need to panic. Points are on offer. You take them. Call now to, to get this restart right, sitting with their, their two pods, waiting for the receipt of this. Dave Shanahan waiting to come on for Ulster. Interesting decision, that one. Tommaso Boni is leaving the field and on is uh, coming Juan Battista Vanditti, another seasoned campaigner. Andrew Trimble bumped at the touch and that's going to be a zebra line out. What a good start by Vanditti. Did absolutely the right thing there. Allowed Ulster's captain to take the ball and swept them into touch. Yeah, an outstanding kickoff, exactly what you want, right close to the touch line and then affecting that tackle to put them straight back on attack right on the, just inside the 22. Dave Shannon is indeed on for uh, John Cooney. He's got 11 of us, there's 16 points. Krumon adds his weight to it. It's a well-organized line out by Zebra. Johan Meyer. Nice patient build up. Gemaroli. Panico. Number two side entry. Clearing the threat out from the side. Number two. Oliviero Fabiani came in not from the rear Number of that rock but from the side and has given Ulster a chance to clear their lines. Still time for Ulster, but my word, Ryan, they'll have to work a lot harder. Yeah, and with, with the game in the balance, um, an unusual decision to replace Cooney, who's kicking so well off the ground, and what might be only a point or two that separates, they've, they've made that decision. There are other kicking options, but they'll be coming in cold for, for what could be some crucial kicks. So interesting change 
made at that 64 minute mark. Uh, doesn't look as if John Cooney was uh, bothered by injury at all, so a tactical decision by the Ulster management. Well away by Timoney. Bit of a flat pass there. Well, that is hopeless in the middle of the park. Fortunately for Ulster, Zebra couldn't capitalise. Yeah, a fly hack through on that occasion. May have seen Ulster exposed when you're up in an attacking formation. There's not much cover there. Elected to try and pick it up and unfortunately wasn't able to do that. But certainly a mix up in the midfield and uh, a strange one that from set piece with no pressure that the ball would be passed to no one. Dave Shanahan, a try scorer a week ago as a replacement for uh, Paul Marshall, who had uh, 15 stitches and served in a couple of cuts on his Mr. head. Cost, uh, back to old fun and games in the scrums. Both hookers remain. All four props have been changed. And on the far side of the scrum for the Zebra, as we mentioned, is uh, Eduardo Bello, an enormous young Argentinian tight head. 14 minutes to go, four Five. points between them. Set. Too many. Shanahan switches direction. Lelia Fano, Darren Cave. Set a nice target. Shanahan flat. Kieran Treadwell runs into heavy traffic. Shanahan. Fian Herbst. Gets those legs pumping. Shanahan again. Ian Henderson. Not sure there was a, a arms involved in that tackle. That was an illegal tackle. The referee, I think, has spotted it. 17, no arm tackle. Yep, number 17. Sammy Panico and no arm tackle. Now this is quite kickable, but John Cooney's not there. Yeah, Christian Lee Lafano, you'd expect to be the one asked to step up and take that kick. It's definitely the option to take it directly in front, 40 out. And with a four-point margin, the right option to take to kick through. In the meantime, Olivero Fabiani is leaving the field to be replaced by Luhandra Luce, who's a 21-year-old from Cape Town. And he has played well. And he's another man that uh, Conor O'Shea will have inked into his squad, I'm sure, for the Autumn Internationals and indeed the Six Nations in 2018. A yeah, very committed and energetic display, and interestingly, Ulster is spurning the opportunity for those three points and kicking to the corner. Their lineouts function particularly well. It has been one of the, the key aspects of their performance that, that hasn't gone awry, and they're looking to extract maximum value from the advantage they've had from it. Still time for Ulster. 13 minutes remaining. Good take by Timoney. Sean Reedy is in there as well. Referee has called for the mall and Ulster are driving forward. Sean Reedy has it in there. This is a great drive. They've got to within five meters. Marshall. Can he stretch? Pretty close. Referee is having a really good look. Ulster must get something from here. And they've got over. They've got the try that puts them back in the lead. And it's Vian Herbst. A replacement for the second week in a row, and for the second week in a row, the South African who's Irish qualified gets a try for Ulster. Yeah, it was an outstanding driven ball, and I don't think Zebra committed enough players to start with. There was two or three hanging off that allowed Ulster to get momentum, and then the chaos that followed, they managed to, to get very close to that line, and then some simple uh, some pick and goes from there. And, got the opportunity to get over just having a quick look uh, to see if there was any obstruction in that last phase well it was great work initially by by Luke Marshall who got right across the gain line and then the pick up and drive and Dave Shanahan's hands up in the air yeah we've uh, TMO's called in and I think there's a little bit of obstruction with a player just preventing them getting to the try score in that uh, last phase of play yes the defense by Ulster 
I'm not sure where the, where the screen is in the ground that the referee can see. Oh, yeah, so we're, so we're, it's, quite, it's quite far away. I don't know how he's going to be able to see that. Christian Leofano, Lydia Fano is waiting to take the conversion. And Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Trimble is coming trotting over. Well, this could change the whole complexion of the game, just as Ulster thought they were back in the lead with less than 15 minutes remaining. Now, there was the drive. Yeah, nothing wrong with that part of it. I think it's at the end there as, as Darren Cave's looking to, to, to get, get his position um, back into the attacking line. One of the Zebra players uh, is obstructed potentially from making that tackle. You can't really see it from that angle, can you? Yeah. Okay, this is the angle coming up. You can hear the TMO saying this is the angle coming up. Well, who's obstructing whom there? Yeah, it's further on than that. There's nothing wrong with the driving mall phase of the play. It's when it gets to the try line. Now Mike is coming up now, and it's the breakaway of the Ulster Mall. I can hear the TMO, Neil Patterson, saying it's the breakaway from the Ulster Mall. I don't understand that. Yeah, he's not concerned about what happened on the try line. He's saying once that mall de detached, were their players blocking? Is that initial breakaway on the blind side. So we've got the initial breakaway, we're saying, we're saying that's changing lanes and that's obstruction. There's, so, there's certainly no white player bound at the front, and it is a distinct change of lanes. So we're saying that Ulster, Ulster well, Neil Patterson is saying there's a distinct change, change of lanes, which means an Ulster player that's deliberately correct. changed his angle of defence to cut out a defender. Before the five side entry, is that correct? It did, yes. So we're saying... And the referee was going to penalise the Italians for actually coming in from the side anyway, George Biaggi, but this would actually predate that. So the penalty may be given against Ulster and not the try, and that might cost Ulster the game, but we'll have to see. And that's clear evidence of them breaking away, changing the lead from the side obstruction. That's it, yes. So he's not going to give the try, I don't think. OK, Captain, Captain. OK, what we're seeing is there's a mall going forward. There's a clear change of lane. Uh, Ulster broke in their binding on blindside. It's clear. No, no, it's clear. It's a clear obstruction. And that happened before the five side entry. So it's going back for a penalty against you. For oh, dear, 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 dear. So Ulster's afternoon here on Parma is not getting any better. What we thought might have been a match-changing and match-winning try has been changed to a penalty against Zebra. No try allowed. Christian Iliafana will have to put the little plastic tee again. Um, intrigued by that decision, a changing of lanes. Did it affect the try being scored? Clearly, the TMO thought so. Well, it wasn't the referee who asked for it, so the TMO saw something and he's, he's intervened. Alston not going for the three points, trying to look for a maximum return, and uh, Zebra is still in this one. And, Happy to have that four-point lead. They'll need to get some possession now. It's swinging back towards Ulster, the momentum and the urgency back into the game as, as we enter the final stanza. Well, that was a, a crooked line-out, which will give Ulster the option of the line-out or the scrum. We are, of course, subject to uh, the home director here and, and Palmer giving us the pictures that we require. Okay. You happy there? Ten minutes remaining. Ulster trailing by four points. Okay, patience on the ball, spines up. A lot of people were saying that Ulster should come away from this game with a, a maximum five points, and at the moment, they are Five, consigned to a losing bonus six, point, which I have to say would be totally and utterly unacceptable. It's a bit of a legal scumming there by Zebra. Referee has spotted it. Coming up on the loose head side. And this uh, Sammy Panico gentleman has given away a number of penalties. So can also go to the corner and try the whole thing again and make sure there's no obstruction this time. That's a very good kick by Christian Leliafano. A wee bit of a breeze picking up. 
Just under 10 minutes to go. 2016 to Zebra. Also thought they'd retaken the lead. Try was ruled out. Discipline at all time, lads. John Andrew. Good take by Kieran Treadwell. Miles, they're looking for another shove. Andrew has the ball tucked in. Five to ground. Five to ground. Ball has gone to ground. There goes Andrew. Andrew Trimble goes in. Need it away quickly. Shanahan does get it away. Andrew Warwick. Shanahan again. Ferocious tackling there by Zebra. Shanahan, Lelia Fano. Absolutely clattered. Ferocious stuff. Now Trimble is popping up everywhere. Rob Little. Dying to get back in action. Good ground by the replacement. Well taken on again by Ulster. Shanahan falls over it. Lelia Fano. Interception. Oh, catastrophe for Ulster. This is going to be game. And away goes number eight, Romato. Gimaroli. And he's running the length of the field for the Zebra's third try. And surely that will put it to bed. Ulster desperate. Pass intercepted. 80 metres scamper by the 22-year-old Italian under 20 international. And that's going to be game set and not for Zebra. And a famous victory, I'm pretty sure, here in Parma. Yeah, Ulster spurning the opportunity to kick for goal on two consecutive occasions. It looked inevitable that they would score. It looked like they had the patience to go through the phases and then it was just picked off that line speed again. Bearing fruit for them as he snatched it almost out of Ian Henderson's hands and then the number eight had the ability to, to, to go the distance. There was Ulster backs chasing him, but inspired by the cheers of the home crowd, he scored a vital point for Zebra. They'll, uh, they'll look to close this game out now, and for Ulster, the speculative passes need to come into play. They need to take the low percentage options because with time running out, they're considerably behind on the clock. Well, I'm not altogether sure that uh, Zebra can believe it. Conor O'Shea, they director of rugby for Italy, the former Irish international fullback, is uh, just leaving the ground with a huge grin on his face. He wasn't expecting a, a victory today, but he was expecting a pretty decent performance, and Zebra have not only put in a very decent performance, they've just about copper fastened a victory, unless Oscar can come back, and this kick is crucial. He's brought it in. Yes, he has. Wonderful bit of striking by Marcello Violi. Adds an extra two points. And Ulster now, with only a handful of minutes remaining, find themselves 11 points adrift. It's 27-16 to Zebra, with only a matter of minutes remaining. And Ulster now playing for a losing bonus point, uh, something they wouldn't have envisaged at the start of today. But credit where credit's due, an inspired performance from Zebra. Uh, their, def their defence showed uh, what it meant more than anything else and from the first minute through to the 73rd minute they've been producing those big hits, they've had intensity in all the physical content and with uh, six minutes to go they're, uh, they're getting their last few players onto the pitch. As on is coming Jacopo Sarto who scored a try last week against the Southern Kings. Well, Zebra can hardly believe it. But to be fair to the man, they deserve this win. Yeah, Ulster will dissect their performance and, and a lot of that focus will be on, on the handling errors that allowed Zebra so much possession. But uh, ultimately, it, it was Zebra won it, not Ulster losing it. And a very comprehensive performance and a victory no one really saw coming if that's the way these last few minutes pan out. Well, a Zebra player down with a bit of crump. There was the, the pass thrown and there was the interception. And what a turn of speed was shown by Renato Giamaroli, the 22-year-old. Got a try against the Southern Kings a week ago, and he's got another one here. Yeah, a little tug on the jersey from Carlo Canner on uh, Charles Piertau. Not sure it would have uh, uh, affected the try, but uh, just uh, a, l a little bit of a jersey tug there. Six minutes remaining. And... Uh, on the field, I think, is uh, Serafim Bardoli, young Argentinian prospect. 
He's come on for a can out outside half. Nobody at home on the narrow side for Ulster. This is Badoli. Look, Marshall makes the tackle on his opposite number. Johan Meyer, who's been part of a very good young breakaway back row trio for Zebra. More experienced George Biaggi, Viole, Badoli. No way through. Sarto. Good continuity once again. Basenji, who's caused Ulster a problem or two, not just in the past, but today. Good tackle by Matthew Ray. But a zebra with five minutes to go in possession. And now just inside Ulster's half, that was Sarto, the replacement. Pioli, Badoli. Good work by Tomas Castello, who will be a very happy captain. Pick up and drive by the replacement prop. Gets it away nicely. Castello again. Krumov trying to cause mayhem. That's a clever little kick. And also give away the penalty. Look, Marshall, furious with the referee's decision. Told him he'd come round from an offside position. Marshall made the tackle. The tackle player doesn't have the rights any the, the tackler doesn't have the rights anymore, had to retreat and come through the back gate is the ruling there. And uh, Zebra looking to finish this off in style in uh, in Ulster territory. And the crowd really showing their appreciation for the spirit that Zebra have shown today. An outstanding performance and uh, one certainly we didn't see coming and, and most people watching wouldn't have seen coming, but full value for their win. And Zebra going for the corner because they've scored three tries. And can you imagine the reaction if they can get a fourth try and a bonus point try and leave Ulster going home tail between legs with nothing? This has to be one of the greatest victories in the history of this Zebra Club, which uh, we all thought wasn't going to make it to the start of this season. Yeah, when you consider they were thrown together, a lot of players left over the uncertainty and uh, Ulster came flying high, unbeaten this season, and they've been dissected by a very good Zebra performance. They've won the line out. Fioli, Johan Mayer, assisted by Sarto. Change of direction. Try scorer Giovanni Lacata. Fioli. Sarto again. Eccentric hairstyle, but orthodox in terms of his play. Nice little flat ball. Sarto assisting. They're getting closer to the line on that fourth try. That's knocked forward. Advantage to Ulster. And Lilia Fano, who's had a, a quietish game by his own standards, couldn't get it away. Yeah, Zebra have made sure of that with their line speed. It's cut out a lot of the options. There were some opportunities created in the first half. Haven't been too many in the second half. And uh, the game of rugby is still at its core a physical contest. And Zebra have been the team with the, the greater intensity in the physical contact. They've won those battles. And that's really set the platform for what is uh, an outstanding win for them. And on for his very first Ulster cap is uh, Adam McBurney. Yeah, knock on in the John Andrew has played pretty well again. And Adam McBurney learned his uh, rugby at the great yeah, Randallstown Club. Star of a couple of Irish uh, under-20 World Cup sides, but here he is now thrown into this Calden with his team trailing by 13 points and three it's minutes remaining. Also have no option from here but to attack Fine. to try to salvage something. They have to get a try, they've got a penalty. Early engaged on the far side by the Argentinian tight head prop. Two and a half minutes to go, Lilia Fano finds a very good touch. His kicking out of hand all day has been very good, but much of the rest of Ulster's play has been, well, less than good. Oh, I thought Adam McBurney had come on. This, this is John Andrews still there. Well, Adam McBurney has come on, but he's not coming on as a replacement yeah. hooker. I think he's moved into the back row. If John Andrew could play in the back row. However, it's Andrew to throw. That's not straight. 
And again, Zebra doing their best to stop Lilia Fano. Cave has a good cut himself. He's got Little with him. Here goes Rob Little. Pietau's there, Little's going to go, and he slips it inside the Cave. And it's going to be a seven-pointer for Ulster. In my word, they need it. But it's all too late, and Cave drop kicks the conversion. So all seven points for Ulster. And they've closed the gap now to four points. And there's a minute and a half to go. And could the amazing happen? If Ulster can gather in the ball from the restart, they could come back to this game. That would be crushing for Zebra if that was to happen. Very clever from Darren Cave, understanding uh, where the clock was, taking the quick kick and preserving time left on the clock. There's certainly enough time left that there, there will be a restart. And uh, Ulster clinging on by a thin lifeline. Let's go. Trying to work out who actually went off for uh, for Ulster. Might have been Nick Timoney, I'm not quite sure. Okay, we've made another change. Uh, Palazzani has come on. Guglielmo Palazzani, who can play on the wing. Long restart kick, a sensible one taken in by Sean Reedy. This ball has to be moved, and there is Adam McBurney. Thirty seconds to go. Ulster have to keep possession. Lilia Fano, Andy Warwick. Good work by the loose head, and he's thrown it forward. Well, just what Ulster didn't need to lose possession deep inside their own half, and all Zebra have to do for 15 seconds is keep this ball and they kick it as far up into the air as is humanly possible, and they will have won a famous victory. They have turned Conference B leaders Ulster over in some considerable style. They have played 80 minutes, and the honour of putting it into touch goes to Marcello Violi, and Zebra thoroughly deservedly have won this game. The worst performance by Ulster in recent seasons. What a turnover here in Parma. Final score, Zebra 27 and Despond, Desponding Ulster 23.